time since their last race. And I'll be honest, I have goosebumps. I have goosebumps. The world was still not normal. There was a lot of uncertainty around how the year would unfold, whether events would be back to normal. Three times runner-up in the Ironman World Championships at Kona. Well, look, she's the most popular triathlete in the world. I think she has the biggest social media following in the world. She, everyone loves to follow the workload she does. She works very, very hard. She was second in the 1500 meter, and she's racing all those top ITU athletes, the indoor games, and she takes second there. Fifth at Leeds, and she was a minute behind Flora Duffy. And then she raced Super League and certainly did well there, plus what she did at, at St. George. Of their oh, battle battle parade. Parade. But uh, what I love about this is her engagement with the, the future of our sport, with these young women that look up to Lucy, and they're already, the movement that she started, yeah, it's fantastic. Hands down, if I was still doing my competitor awards, she would have been our female triathlete of the year. Might have been just competitor of the year because she was so dominant across so many different platforms. Off the back of change, athletes progress and have their best ever races. I believe that change can be for the best. I've always been chasing the hardest event that there is. So the year started off on a pretty positive tone. We had some exciting things happening. We actually headed out to Dubai for a training camp because we couldn't train at home properly. We couldn't get to our normal training destination, Club La Santa in Lanzarote. So we headed out to Dubai to train, which was a first for us. We also had our new bike sponsor announcement with Cube in the pipeline, which was really exciting. We had so many people wanting to know what bike sponsor we'd signed with. They were guessing, they were trying to see what bikes we were riding in Dubai and we were keeping it all top secret. So it definitely set the tone for an exciting year ahead, despite there being kind of some unknowns and uncertainty about how the year would actually unfold. 8.1 watts a kilo. She's absolutely flying around this course at the moment. Give me some, give me some, give me some, give me some energy. Wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, wanna come, there's me. There's no fire in that smoke, I let me go. But Lucy Charles Barkley using that draft benefit to come round to the opposition. She takes two from two, so what a start from the Brits. It's very close, Barkley draws alongside. Oh, it's so, so close on the line. It looks like it tasked Charles Barkley, <laughs> who somehow finds something that will get confirmation of that result. Very, very close indeed. Three time winners at the Challenge Championship in 2017, 2018, and 2019. Please welcome Miss Lucy Charles Barkley. So, biggest fail of the season, luckily I feel like I got it out of the way straight away with Challenge Miami very early on in the year. So that was my first event of the year, it was my first race in 18 months, it was my first race on a new bike, so it was all new things, completely felt rusty kind of felt like I'd gone in maybe slightly underprepared, just didn't feel like in obviously my best shape like I would be later on in the year. Charles Barkley gets penalized, and I had mentioned earlier that it was passing of Sarah Perez, it was actually passing the lady in the black helmet. So she passed her on the inside or the left, and that is why the penalty was given to Lucy Charles Barkley. She will have to serve two minutes at the end of the bike ride. And I think, still think, yes, it was unfair, but I feel like I dealt with it in a very good way. So that would be a fail that I got a penalty. And then the second fail was going over my handlebars at the dismount line. So it will be interesting to see oh, what, what and Lucy, Lucy goes down. Oh. She was breaking hard. Lucy goes sure down did. just at the entrance to T2. 
which again, got it out the way early. Everyone after that, perfect, I think. Let's not go and look at too many race footage. But no, I'm pretty sure we got all of the drama, most of the drama out the way in race one at the start of the year. And it was a good way to kind of blow away the cobwebs and then roll on the rest of the season. Lucy Charles Barclay, 15 months off from competition, a penalty in the bike, a tumble at T2, but an impressive performance for the number two ranked triathlete in the world, Lucy Charles Barclay will come across the finish line in second here in Challenge Miami. <laughs> I've had a little go on the bike just to check that's all working. I'm just going to have a small go on the treadmill just to check how my shoes are feeling, what ones I want to go with, and then I'm going to hop in the pool, do a bit of a swim session, yeah, and just get used to the venue. It's looking really cool, and I'm excited for tomorrow. Alongside Lucy Charles Barclay in her first short course triathlon in her career. Obviously, she stood on the podium uh, three times in a row at Kona at the Ironman World Championship. So, of all the new things I tried this year, my favourite was definitely the Arena Games. There is Lucy Charles Barclay, who's going to see if she can set down a marker and show up some of these short course experienced triathletes, including the world champ who's there in the yellow. It was short and fast. It involved Zwift, which I love. Um, I love the e-racing format. Plus it's less technical in terms of the transitional skills are still important, but they're not quite to the same degree as when you do it in real life short course racing. Also, we did that during the pandemic when there wasn't crowds available to come and watch or they weren't allowed to come and watch. And I imagine if we were to do that in a big arena with huge crowds, music blaring, the atmosphere would just be insane. So that would definitely be up there with something I would no, I would enjoy doing again. She Look has that. absolutely Belted them. demolished the competition. It was close in the first hundred. Lucy Charles in the second hundred has absolutely smashed it. Uh, and she's a remarkable swimmer. She's come from a, that swimming background and done remarkable things in triathlon. She's an iron woman and she's doing a race that lasts 30, 40 minutes compared to a race that lasts eight and a bit hours. And then fascinating in lane two. Lucy Charles Barkley, most swimmers would know her as Lucy Charles. She's a fantastic distance swimmer. She's also a stunning triathlete, an absolutely wonderful triathlete. Obviously put myself out there in a lot of different types of racing this year, put myself into different challenges and really did want to push myself out of my comfort zone. I definitely think the hardest challenge this year was signing up for the 1500 metre freestyle at the Olympic trials. Not a regular pool swimmer at all, an utterly brilliant Ironman triathlete. And not only does she do Ironman, but she does it in Kona. She does the swim in the sea, then she cycles through the lava fields. It is just unbelievably humid and hot, then runs a marathon. And not only been there, she was runner-up in 2017, 2018 and 2019. Having come away from swimming in 2013, it had obviously been a long time since I'd done a proper swimming competition at that top level. So I had to put in so much work, not just because I hadn't done a competition at that level for so long, but because of the pandemic, I had not had access to a swimming pool like I would have wanted. So it really turned into like a six week intense swim block where I just absolutely smashed myself in the pool day in, day out in order to perform at that level. And I think then second to that, the hardest part was the fact that I actually had to be in hotel quarantine to do the event, was only allowed in the hotel to the pool backwards and forth, wasn't allowed any family and friends there. So that made it even more challenging. But at the end of the day, it couldn't have been more rewarding. So it was so worth it. The performance came together. I really enjoyed going back and swimming and competing at that level. But it probably was up there with the biggest challenge of this year. 
yeah, it's actually great to watch Lucy here. You know, I think a lot of the triathletes will be tuning in tonight to see how she's getting on. She's really pushing herself out from the first from the first go, really testing herself. And I think even when I've watched the Super League triathlon, her in Ironman, she really attacks all her races and gives it gives it some heart. So um, it'd be great to see how she fends up against some of the, the distant swimmers here. Lucy Charles up the top there. They're not going to be near the consideration sign, but this is an amazing swim from a wonderful triathlete at the top there. Leah Crisp won the 800 freestyle in the centre and she's going to her legs. It looks like she's maybe just ahead, but uh, Lucy not going to give up at the top. Leah Crisp, I think, is going to win it, the 19-year-old from the Bath National Centre. Oh, my goodness me, right at the very end. So I think an important turning point this year, getting through the Olympic swimming trials, I knew that I'd brought my swimming back up another level. And then after that, I went away on a training camp and it was more of a get back into triathlon camp because my focus had been so highly on swimming. And actually, even in that camp, the way I felt like I got back into shape felt quicker than I'd maybe ever done before in years previous. So that was a real kind of decisive point where I thought, actually, I've been doing triathlon longer now and I feel like it's not going to take me as long to get back to kind of near to the top level of my fitness than maybe it did in the years prior. So a bit of a spanner has been thrown into the mix today. I got a message this morning that I was on the wait list for WTS Leeds, which I thought I probably wouldn't get on the start line because it's home British race, but I have made it onto the start line. So haven't done any transition practice, haven't done any mount dismount work, any short speed stuff. So I've got 11 days till the race. I want to do the race, but also don't want to look like an idiot. So yeah, I need to change my plan. Right. Do you fancy short course? Yeah, I'll give it a go. 11 days notice she's had. I just want to make you mine. Mine, my mine. Mine. Mine, my mine. I just want to make you mine. In her first ever short course race. So the biggest risk I took was definitely lining up at World Triathlon Series. I uh, had not done the preparation I would have liked. I didn't know how it was going to go, but I was willing to go out there and see what happened. I remember being on the start line, probably one of the most nervous I've been all year because it felt like the expectation externally was so high and I knew the small preparation I'd had but also I'm a born competitor, so I wanted to do well, but I didn't know if that was realistic. So that was without a doubt the biggest risk that I took this year. It's going to be a top five in her debut race for Lucy Charles Barkley. Wow! Absolutely incredible. Probably the race where I felt the least pressure and went into it almost a bit blasé was the Eton Dorney Triathlon in the middle of the year, which was still a PTO batch race. But I think because it felt like a home race, it just felt really chilled, like I kind of rocked up. We was there early, but not like days early in advance like I would be for when I'm traveling abroad to race. So it felt really chilled. It was like all the British girls. So it was just felt like a really fun, friendly lineup, to be honest. It felt like we were just gonna go out there, do a really hard training day together. And ultimately, yes, there would be a first, second, third, but that was definitely the one where I was probably just the most chilled. Great location, weather was absolutely boiling, which I think, again, I totally kind of, undervalued how hard that would be because of the warmth of racing in the UK summer when it's actually boiling, which doesn't ever happen really. So that was a surprise. Again, I really enjoyed it, but it was, it just felt super chilled for a race. You, I mean, it's been like for the very first time, you're going to be the Ironman 73, European Championships in Elsinore. 
So the race I enjoyed the most this year, which is a really difficult one to pinpoint because I had so many amazing races, so many great experiences, but my favorite was definitely the 70.3 in Elsinore, the European Championships mainly because it was my first time ever racing in Denmark. I loved it there, it was so nice, so clean, the people were really friendly, it was amazing for cycling. It was quite a technical swim in terms of navigation. The bike course definitely suited me, it was similar to the rolling roads that we have at home. And then the run was the first time this year where I'd actually raced over the half distance. So it was really great to see where my run was heading and lay down my best half marathon run off of the bike at that stage to date. So thoroughly enjoyed it, crowds were amazing and I would definitely love to go back to that race at some point. <laughs> This is your first 70.3 title, I guess. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels nice to win something and not be second, so yeah, really happy with that. Outside of the sporting arena, the kind of most different thing I did this year was the Red Bulletin cover shoot along with the 10 page article, which was a completely different type of photo shoot to anything that I've done before. In a way, it pushed me out of my comfort zone in an entirely different way. So I feel like it kind of definitely fell in tune with how my year had been going, with challenging myself, pushing myself. And I was absolutely blown away by how the images came out. I've said it before, but Rick Guest, who was the photographer, was absolutely amazing to work with. And I just thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience, kind of the getting prepared for it, the kind of slightly more fashion element of it, trying on the different swimsuits and all the kind of different outfits that I got to wear. So that was definitely up there with yeah, one of the most different things I've done this year, not necessarily sport related. <laughs> Obviously I did multiple training blocks throughout the year. I did a really solid block after the Olympic trials, but I would say the biggest training camp that I saw the gains and started to see the progress that I'd made was in the middle of the year at Club the Centre. It was after I'd done a block of racing that included um, Eton Dorney, Elsinore. Then I went away and did an amazing camp. I just was able to build on each session, each week I felt stronger, my recovery was fantastic and we definitely saw some things on that camp that would indicate that the last part of my season was going to be successful. This is the first ever Collins Cup. All the greatest athletes are here. I feel like I did every existing format of triathlon and then there was a new one coming into the mix as well which was the Collins Cup. This is an exciting matchup. Lucy Charles Barkley, this is the one we're excited to watch, one of the greatest swimmers we've ever seen to do the sport of triathlon. She only knows one way to race, and that's from the front, and it's just weather. Can Katie Zafiris and Paula Finley keep up with her in the swim? I got to race for Team Europe. It's the first time I've ever raced in a team of that scale, being an actual continent that I'm racing for, racing on my team with some of my idols in the sport from well, not that long ago when I was a complete newbie in the sport. That was really exciting. It was in Slovakia where I've had some amazing racing before. It was just really cool and different. Unfortunately, I didn't have my best day. I was unwell when I raced, but it still kind of gave me a little bit of confidence because I raced well despite being unwell. And it was kind of a good stepping stone into my world champs final preparation, knowing that if I can race like that when I'm not feeling great, then hopefully all going well. If I feel good for the world champs, then I, I kind of felt like I would have a good race. Four times she's been second at world championships, but she will claim the second wave today, and it might be one of the fastest times of the day for sure, as the multiple talented athlete getting the crowd up and pumped. Oh, it's great. She's working her way to the finishing line now, and it'll be the winner of the second match 
from the European team, Lucy Charles Barkley, the 27-year-old, and we'll put the clock on, Greg, to see what the gap time is. So I feel really fortunate that I had a great season, so I had a lot of good results, but obviously the biggest result of the year was going and winning the 70.3 World Championship. I see tears of joy, tears of happiness, she is the world champion! I think despite any good results that happened in the year, that one has to top them all. It was my first world title. She has dreamt of this moment day in and day out for years, knew she was capable, and today she put it all together. Let's hear it for your women's champion, Lucy Charles Barkley. I did it in a way that I would have always dreamed of getting my first world title, winning by eight minutes and being the fastest on the swim, the bike and the run. So. It's going to be hard to top that this year amongst the other races that I did, but it's going to be hard to top that in my career, I think. So it's definitely set a new benchmark for what I want to try and achieve. Well, guess what, Lucy? You pushed to a world championship title. Lucy Thomas Barkley! Lucy Charles, though, will come on to the dark sands of Malibu. Three triathlons, back-to-back, four-minute breaks in between. Swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. She's not quite as strong as she could be in terms of her skills, but she's running with the best of them and absolutely looking fantastic at the moment. So this year I did a fair amount of back-to-back -back racing, particularly in the middle part of the season, but definitely the most extreme back-to-back -back racing I did was racing the 70.3 World Championships one weekend and then the following weekend racing in a super sprint in the Super League Malibu Triathlon. So that was completely different ends of the spectrum, but it was an amazing opportunity to kind of get to do a race on the way home from winning the World Champs. Being a newly crowned World Champion felt pretty good. Is that smart racing from Lucy Charles, or is she starting to struggle a little bit after winning the 70.3 World Champs? A great way to go and kind of celebrate and do a race. Uh, where else would you want to do it than on Malibu Beach, surrounded by some pretty cool people, some other top level short course athletes, and also throwing some celebrities in the mix as well and getting to do a celebrity relay in the US. So yeah, that was a pretty cool experience as well. She has been eliminated, oh. Lucy Charles Barkley. You would have Charles. never have called that. Another short shoot gone. And man. So I topped off the year by running the London Marathon, which has been something I've wanted to do for so many years. Since I came into triathlon, the London Marathon, it was always something I felt like I could do it because I was racing over the endurance distance. However, things had happened over the years. I'd been injured, uh, I'd been unwell, and this felt like the time that I might finally get to finish the run. Obviously, it was much later in the year than normal. It's normally in April. So it was a great way to kind of round out the year. It kept me training a little bit, maybe when I probably would have just been celebrating winning a world title. Ended up having a really good run, was just able to soak up the atmosphere. Actually started in the celebrity wave, which was different, it was fun. Finally completing a bucket list race. One of the athletes 
we have in the field is Lucy Charles Barkley, one of the best swimmers in the sport. And I think all these other women, Taylor Nib, like all these strong athletes, will know they have to swim well today to keep themselves in the race. season officially closed with WTCS Abu Dhabi, which was my first ever sprint distance in a draft legal format. She's going to change the complexion of this race in the water. We saw it in Leeds. I'm sure we're going to see it again today. Yeah, I mean, ranks number 50th. You wouldn't think an athlete in 50th has maybe have such an impact on the race. Again, kind of throwing me out of my comfort zone, but it was an amazing location, like racing on the Yas Marina F1 circuit. It's pretty cool, especially when you're quite into F1. It's it's an amazing location to actually go and lay down some power on the bike. She's in a really tough spot now. You yeah. know, 16 kilometres to go, or 15 k's to go, riding solo with a, a pack trying to close her down. Learned some new skills, raced with the top women in the world, managed to get a top 12 finish, which was pretty decent. Um, it just, again, highlighted the strength and depth in the British women. It was a great way to close out what has been an amazing year. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't To see the world in action, what we can be. So, as part of this video, and to say thank you to all of you for following me over the last year, for kind of being part of my support crew, being my fans, we are going to do a giveaway with my sponsor, Oakley, who have donated a number of pairs of Oakleys for you guys to win. So, all you have to do to win those is comment what was your favorite race that you enjoyed watching me do this year. If you comment that below, we're gonna select a number of winners to win a pair of Oakleys, so make sure to do that. Whoa! It's gold. Yeah. And it's got your signature and your times. Oh my god. And uh, yeah, and even. <gasps> That's gold. Yeah. <gasps> oh my god. That is epic. And these are limited edition. <gasps> yes, Lola, look at it. It's a beautiful pie. So this is Cube's present for saying well done at the World Champs. Wow. Do I want it? Yeah. Mega. That is so cool. Do you like triathlon? Not really.